Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, let's, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Welcome to Touched by the Word Ministries Apostolic Center Hybrid Service. I am Dr. Tony Mason. I stand before you to bring you the bread of life this morning. We welcome you, those who are tuning in to Facebook or YouTube, and then we welcome those who are in the service with us. There is a word from the Lord this morning. Let's go ahead and do our declaration of faith. Hallelujah. If you need a Bible in service, raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Hallelujah. Repeat these words after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hero. And my life has been made better by the word of life. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 4, please. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And when we leave 1 Timothy, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I was on travel this weekend. God deposited this word in my spirit at about 35,000 feet. 1 Timothy chapter 4, something about flying above the clouds this gives you a different perspective of God and his his awesomeness and how limited we are that God of the universe would even consider us amen let alone to be his servants but because but to call us sons and daughters First Timothy chapter 4 verse 10 it reads like this he said for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men especially of those that believe these things command and teach let no man despise thy youth but be thou in an example of, of the believers watch this in word in conversation in charity in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine Continue in them, for in doing this, this is the key. Thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And then let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to begin reading at verse 1. That's some rich, rich stuff there. And I'm praying that the Lord will allow the anointing to flow that makes preaching and teaching easy. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation of you or letters of rec a commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such stress have we through Christ to God with. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Who also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit give life. Amen? Amen. Stand with me if we pray. Father, we come before you right in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your sweet presence in this place. Father, I pray that those that's on YouTube or Facebook, Lord God, would feel the anointing as it's flowing in this atmosphere right now. Father, I come because in of and within myself, I'm incapable, I'm inadequate. I pray that you'd anoint this vessel of clay and that you'd anoint these lips of clay. That I will only speak that which edifies, which exhorts, and which builds your people up. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. 
in the holy and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And before you take your seats, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, hold your position. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats. Hold your position. Amen. Hold your position. One of the things that we have to understand is that we have an enemy who's real. He's not a figment of our imagination. He is real. And he cannot stand you. And he cannot stand me. He is not something or someone that we're to take lightly. He cannot stand the ground that you walk on. And the Bible says in John 10:10 10, 10, that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So now we know, we know that not only is he our enemy, but he's a thief. And so he comes to consume whatever God has blessed you with. He's come to consume your health. He's come to consume your wealth. He's come to consume, amen, your relationships. He's come to consume your anointing. Because he wants to leave you empty and dry. But I'm here this morning to encourage you that no matter how bad it may seem, weeping may endure for a night, but in the morning, joy will burst forth. And some of you all and some of us, we're going through tough times right now. Amen. But tough times is what makes us. It's not when things are going well that everything is okay. It's when things are difficult. It's when things are hard. It's when we can't make ends meet. That's when we're being made. That's when we're going to find out what kind of character that's on the inside of you. It's nothing like a storm to cause people around you to be shaken. And you didn't even realize that when things was going good, that not only were they about to be shaken but they were already shaky and you thought they were somebody that you could depend on but it took a storm to uproot them and let them know oh you're not who i thought you was and it's not so much of who they who they were it's so much it's so much of who dwells on the inside of them see we putting our hope in people who are religious amen but they have no substance paul said it like this he said he said he said they come Amen. Denying the power, form in fashion, but without the power. See, we need the power in this day and age here. See, the enemy, has, he's coming to, to rock you to sleep. You know, you take a little baby and you, the baby's little, he's a little restless and, and you take him and you put him in your arms and you get him in position and you just rock him and rock him and slowly he's calming down and before you know it, he done drifted off to sleep where well, he's rocking some of us and he's trying to get some of us to fall asleep he's trying to get us to fall asleep and not be aware of what's going on around us so that when things happen like it happened in mayfield and it happened in illinois we'll just brush it off because it doesn't have any effect on us but the thing you got to understand is death angel is roaming this nation like never before and every time something happens the first thing that comes to my mind is were they ready were they prepared and I'm guarantee you, amen, that we need to keep the city of Mayfield in prayer. We need to keep all those 250 square miles of, of whatever that hurricane did, amen. We need to keep those people in prayer because, see, some of them, they're about to lose their mind right now. See, 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 when trouble comes, it won't always last. But see, that kind of trouble, it can linger with you. And I'm trying to get you that no matter what's going on in your life, hold your position. Don't back up now. Don't lose heart now. Don't lose your faith now. Don't throw in the towel now so this thing don't work. I'm here to tell you it works. I'm here to tell you that it'll work for you if you stay in it. I'm here to tell you, amen, that God has never lost a patient. I'm here to tell you that he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm here to tell you, ask the old folk, amen. Ask him when they didn't have enough to put it together, won't he keep you? Won't he make what you got, the little that you got, won't he make it last? Won't he make it spread? Won't he make it accommodate your situation? 
I'm trying to encourage you this morning to hold your position. Amen. Don't, 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 don't give up now. Don't throw in the towel now, amen. I know don't, it's not easy. It's not easy, amen, when my money that I got, man, amen, is, is already was stretched, but now inflation is making it stretch even further. Amen, but guess what? At least I got some money to buy something. Somebody don't have that. I don't care where I travel. The homeless state, the state of the homelessness is getting worse and worse and worse. And I was in one of the more popular cities within the last month. I could not believe the amount of homeless that was roaming the streets. And one of the things I've, I said, God, I thank you that I'm not homeless. I thank you, Lord God, that I had somebody praying for me. You better understand something. The reason that you're in, you, in your place right now is somebody was praying for you. They may not have had a degree. They may not have spoken in tongues. They may not could preach you up on a pew. They may not could carry a tune. But they know how to check in with the Father. And we are here because they prayed. We are here because they stood in the gap. We are here, amen. Because when we were somewhere acting a fool and cut up, they were saying, hold on, Lord, to my son. I don't know where he's at. I don't know what club he's in. I don't know who he's with but keep him and bring him home and every time when the devil was lurking around the corner God diverted your direction and brought you home he brought the daughters home he brought the sons home why because somebody prayed and I have a concern with the body of Christ because I see a, a listlessness in their eyes as if they're tired and you know how I am. I like to finish up the year strong. It's been a year, but I want to finish up strong. I want to finish up, amen, going into the new year knowing that the best days are ahead of us, not behind us. See, the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, amen, and I want to be in position to receive what God has for me. See, if you throw, your, throw the towel in, you're going to be out of position. Let me tell you something. If you play football, it's nothing worse than being out of position. You ever been blindsided? I mean, you've been hit so hard because you were out of position. You should have pulled and you stayed still. Before you know it, somebody came and popped you out of nowhere. And they knocked you down so hard, you just got to lay there. Because you got to make sure that everything's still in place. And then you got to make sure, am I alive? And then you got to catch your breath. And when you get up, you're just looking for something steady to hold on to. And ain't nothing worse than, than, than being somewhere in God and you're throwing in the towel and you're giving up. And watch this. You're out of position. And God wanted to bless you, but you stepped out of line. Stay in line. Stay in position in this season. Stay strong in God. Because it's not us, it's God in us. See, the problem is you're looking at yourself and how you used to do things. You're looking at yourself and, you know, when I was in the world and I did this and it worked. But you don't understand, you was tapped into the world system. See, the world system, it's like this. You thought, and I thought we were successful. But only thing it was, was the devil had a carrot on the end of a stick and he would pull it we would move a little further and he would pull it move a little further and we would pull it and we didn't even know that he was destined to kill us if we stayed out there longer than what we were supposed to be and so he had us bamboozled and, and hoodwinked that think that we were living good and it wasn't until we came on this side till we really recognized that we weren't living at all do you know something that happened to me about a month ago the more I'm learning about the word of God, the more I'm learning what I didn't know about the word of God. The more I, before this pandemic, I was like, Job, you thought you heard of him, but because of this pandemic, now I know who he is. And guess what I found out? God's a keeper. If you want to be kept. Amen. If you want to be kept from the enemy, if you want to be kept out of sin, if you want to be kept out of perversion, if you want to be kept out of witchcraft, he'll keep you. And not only will he keep you, he'll bless you. Amen. I, I mean, it's, it, it amazes me the praise reports I'm getting. 
the praise reports of, of debt cancellation, the praise reports of people getting jobs, the praise report of people acquiring property. Watch this in the midst of a famine. It reminds me of Joseph in the Bible when the Bible says that he planted in the midst of a famine and nobody else could be able to tap in. Nobody else was able to be blessed. But the Bible says that he reaped a hundredfold. How is that possible? Because he was locked into God. He was connected to God. And I'm here to tell you this morning, it's your connection that's going to get you over. See, some places you can't even get in there for an interview because you need somebody on the inside. But I'm glad I'm not only am I connected to somebody on the inside, I'm connected to somebody that's in charge of it all. He'll touch somebody's heart to promote me. He'll touch somebody's heart to bless me. He'll touch somebody's heart to cancel out my debt. Go to Revelation chapter 3. See, we, we, some of us, we, we've become anesthetized. I remember my first surgery, and I had tore my knee up, my right knee. And I had to go to surgery, and I had there to do a spinal tap on me. And, and it, what they do when they do a spinal tap on you is, is they take this needle and they put it in your back. And they release the medication. And, 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 and the individual, he'll tell you, don't move. He'll tell you, he'll tell you don't move. And it feels kind of weird because it's going in your back. But he'll tell you, don't move. Because if you move, he's liable to hit something or a nerve that ordinarily he wouldn't hit and you'll be paralyzed. And so during the surgery, all my waist down, I can't feel anything, but I don't know this because I'm in surgery. And so when I come out of surgery and they bring me around, I can't feel nothing below me. In other words, I've been anesthetized against the pain. But how many of you know that medication don't always last long? And when that thing begin to wear off. And the lady came to me and she said, you're going to have to use the bathroom. Oh, we can't release you. They, they give you these milestones that you have to meet before they release you. One of them, I had to walk on my own. I never felt so much pain in my life as to when I took my leg and I took and put it off the bed. The blood rushed to my foot. And I mean, and that's one. I got to do another one. And I, and I went like, oh, oh, God. I mean, it was that bad. I'm like, I'm saying, oh, God, help me. Because it's pain. Because the medication has worn off. And I got to meet this milestone. I got to stand on my own. And it brings tears. That's just with one leg. I got to do the other leg. And that's the way the devil has gotten us. Some of us have been anesthetized against the pains of life. So much so that we don't even want to face life. So much so that we want to really, I really want to just go in a room and shut the door and get away from it all. I don't want, it's so bad. It's, it's so out of control. Even the murders have become so horrendous that it, it, it boggles the mind. But you running away ain't going to solve the problem. You got to have your faith in the rock that is higher than I. We are quickly racing to the end. I'm not just saying that. Your life, my life, this world as we know it will never be the same. It will not be the same. That's just dealing with the egregious acts of violence. Storms and hurricanes and, and murders and I'm not going to get into the pandemic side of it or the political side of it and how as a nation we are divided. My concern is the church is divided. Are you in Romans, I mean Revelation chapter 3? Let's begin reading at verse 14. <clears throat> and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things said the, said the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase of goods and have need of nothing, 
and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, watch this, in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. It's so much in this. In the book of Revelation, there are seven churches, seven of them. Let me see if I can remember. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Tyra, Tyra, Philadelphia. There's an, uh, it's another one with an S, and then Laodicea, Laodicea. We are in the Laodicean age, Sardis. Okay? Philadelphia, Sardis, Philadelphia, and then Laodicea. We are the Laodicean church. We are the lukewarm church. We are the church that we are in church, but we don't have any emotion when it comes to the things of God. We are lukewarm. Things happen and we don't care. God blesses us and we look at him like you owed it to me anyway. That's our attitude. That's why he said, he said, thou art, you, you say you're rich. He said, but you're poor. He said, now that you're poor, he said, you're miserable. There's no one happy because we think that our contentment is in the accumulation of things, titles, and accomplishments. Our, amen, joy and happiness comes in our connection to him. That's why some people, they get something and they, and they quickly become disenamored, not enamored with it, they go on to the next thing. It's like a little child, he got so many toys and they look over there and another child has something that's interesting to him, he'll drop his toy and go snatch the other little, toys, other little child's toy. Because what he got, he's become bored. And some of us, we become bored with the Christian faith. We become listless. And lack of days. Some of us, we won't even say our grace when we are in public, especially when we're around our rich friends or those who have some type of level of accomplishment in their life because we don't want to, to offend them and let them know that I bless my food. We forget when we didn't have this level of food and we were not blessed with being able to go to Ruth Chris or something of that nature. We were risk. We, we remember when we were, grew up on neck bones and uh, uh, I'm dating myself and, and collard greens and, and black eyed peas, amen. So now we've come to Ruth Chris and now we won't even say, Lord, thank you. So you slowly backslide and you're letting your position go. You're slowly letting God know. You can't handle the next level. You can't handle the blessing. I'm, I'm amazed at how many people in the church who've been blessed during the pandemic and they get blessed and they change. To such an extent, I don't even know them anymore. I, I, I'm talking about stupid blessing. I'm not talking about with just a, a couple of dollar raise on a job. I'm talking about a job that if God hadn't had somebody positioned to bless them, they wouldn't even be there. And now you lay your eyes on them and I'm trying to figure out, who are you? It's changed you that much now? Who are you? The objective of this teaching is to employ us to, to personify our desire to go deeper and higher in the things of God. See, it's, see, we're going to get in trouble because a year from now, Satan is going to find some of us in the same place. Because there's no growth. That's called complacency. You know why people, and I'm not from Alabama, I just, I just like the way Nick Saban does things. I'm not from Alabama. I'm from Virginia. I thought I came home. Yesterday, I came back from visiting my mom. I just like the way he does things. 
He has a laundry list of things they must do in the off season to prepare for the season. And he's going to know your level of conditioning, your weight, your health, whether or not you did the things to prepare. And when you come to camp and you haven't checked off his list, you fall below or lower in the depth chart. And then parents get upset. They get upset and they're not knowing that your son didn't, he didn't do his homework. And God is upset with some of us because we haven't done our homework. Ain't nothing worse then you get a playbook and you get in the game and you don't know the play. And God has given us a playbook and some of us don't even know the play. That's why we get upset when uh, opposition and adversity come to us. That's why you need some word on the inside of you to let you know this ain't gonna last. See, see, see when Adversity comes to me, I know it has an expiration date. Mm -hmm. See, see, Job's troubles didn't last always. It had a beginning date, but it also had a date that it had to end. And because I know the playbook, and because I know that God is not a respecter of person, what he does for one in principle, he must do for another. And some of us, we just get backed into a corner and we about ready to throw in the towel and give up. We about ready to throw in the flag and say, I can't take it no more. But you better take it because the retest is harder. The retest is harder. You ever had a retest? I'm talking about in school. And man, you steady and you, you missed the test. And you called around and... Can I just be real? And you got it. Oh, okay, that's on the test. Okay, good. And you get into the retest. He done threw a whole new thing on you. And you done missed it. Because you were studying for what you thought you knew on the test. But the retest is harder. And when you're made to repeat things in life. That's why some of us ain't got no further than what we have because we failed the first test and we don't want to take the retest. But baby, you got to take the retest. You got to go through it. You got to be put in the oven. You got to be made. Let me tell you something. Some of us, we are blessings is on the shelf because we're not ready for it. We're not prepared for it. Some of us, if he bless you now, you'll get all the way out of God and then you You'll be out of place. Let me tell you something. Your blessing is not just for you. You're blessed to be a blessing to others. The kingdom of God has to be funded. In 2022, we take it to the next level. Now, y'all saying amen, I mean it. We're going to the next level. I ain't got time. I'm with you, Pastor. Then when they call for the meeting, you, I can't even find you. We're going to the next level. I'm going with the goers. I'm going with those who's ready. I'm going those with, with those who, whose word has been submitted. And they won't say one thing and do another. They'll be with me. They'll be with prophets. When they're going to get tough, they won't back up. They won't turn their back on us. They won't just leave, amen, because they think that the grass is greener on the other side. But let me tell you something. You better understand that when you start from the ground floor up, you're called a way maker. You're a pathfinder. And that way you're going has not been traveled before. And it takes something to go that way. And it's hard. And guess what? Many can't travel with you because they're not raised, they're not made for the test. They're not made to go where God has called you to go. That's why God told us, leave Lot at home. He told Abraham to leave your family, leave your kindred, leave that which you're familiar. Because I'm about to take you somewhere new that you haven't traveled before.
And some of you are out of place because you allow the devil to do the carry thing to you. Everything with God is strategic. And you have time, you have chronos, which is just regular time. But then you have kairos, which is the set up point of time. Hey, listen to what I'm saying. In April of 2019, prophetess sets out on a, just a regular day, a regular journey. Didn't think nothing of it. In fact, when she tell you about it, something, one of the things she had to do, she really didn't want to do it, but she went on and obeyed God. And she decided to take a detour that was diametrically opposite of what she would have normally have done. Because normally where she went, she would have normally came out, took a right, and hit the parkway. She decided to come out, take a left, and come down till she turned on Pulaski Pike. And she went down Pulaski Pike, and she seen a sign for this building. Now, what if she had pushed that to the side and said, that ain't God. I'm going to continue to go where I want to go. Sometimes God tells you to do something that don't make sense. Sometimes, that's why you can't share everything that God asks you to do with everybody because they're going to look at you. They don't even make sense and they'll talk you out of it. Some things you got to go to hold close to your breast and keep it to yourself. Some people have lost out because they told the wrong individual and they got talked out of it. Why? Because it didn't make sense. Ain't nobody in your family went that high in degree. Why you got to go there? Because it don't make makes sense ain't nobody in your family own that kind of property why y'all want to go all that and, and stress yourself out why because it don't make sense you got women sitting in churches being they got a call of God on their lives and they won't leave because they've been talked about it and say guess what it don't make sense and so they'll sit right there and they'll sit there and the anointing will dry up and they know they've been called. They know they've been anointed. They know that there's more in them than coming to church and sitting on a pew and writing a check every month. But they're around people that tells them it don't make sense. Any time, let me help you out. Any time you deal with God, it won't make sense. In the time you dealing with God, it, it will sound crazy. In the time you deal with God, it, 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 you share it with somebody, they'll call the police on you and have you committed because it don't make sense. And sometimes you can't go by what don't make sense. You got to go by it because you know I've heard from God and because I got a relationship with God, I'm going to go despite what they say, even if it don't make sense there can be no true revival in church until a revival individually so before the church can be revived you need to revive yourself stop looking for people to prompt and prime you and get you ready to come to church. And then you come to church any kind of way. And they got to still prime and prime you. Amen. Like, you know, when, when, when you deal with an old carburetor, uh, you got to take it. You got to prime it with some gasoline, right? You got to prime it to get it ready to start up. And some of us are like that old carburetor. You need some spiritual gas to prime you. Instead of you already come here ready to praise him, ready to glorify him, ready to honor him. Why? Because I'm in position. See, see. Praises go up. Blessings come down. It's when I praise him. It's when I bless him. It's when I glorify him. That's when he dropped the blessings. That's when he gives me the revelation. That's when he takes me to higher heights and deeper depths in here. But when I come here and I don't got bougie. Oh, what is it about us in the church? You And when you're in the club, you're on the table. You get saved, but then you get bougie. Oh, you get bougie. 
in the table you drop in the club you drop it in the, like it's hot but you come to club you can't even wave your hand can I get a wave offering in the club I'm talking about the women you drink the dude up under the table but when he comes here and he tell you drink of the Holy Ghost you'll sit there like that's too don't take all that really And some of you all, you did the 12 on the pole, but you're coming to church. And you won't even stand for the benediction. And some of the people you used to hang with in the club, their mind is bad. Or they done drunk themselves into a fuzzy. Or they're in jail or worship that dead and God allowed you to live through the same thing that they were doing and then you get delivered and you just that's how you do God you know you that because I don't want to mess up my weave as if that's going to mess up your weeds. Uh, so you don't want to feel like, you don't want to know you're too religious. That ain't what you said when you was on the dance floor. Now God saved you and he put you in position. And you won't even show him love. You won't even say, Lord, thank you. You won't even say, Lord, I, I, I bless you. How many of you all, don't raise your hand, have actually thanked God during this pandemic that you ain't got sick? Not, not, not complain because you got to wear a mask. Not complain because of the debate going on with the vaccinations or, or and things of that nature. But just, Lord, thank you for not allowing the vaccine to touch my body. And not only that, God, you didn't even allow it to come now in my dwelling. How many of you just say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I thank you. How many of you all just thank God for the vaccination? Because I remember when there was a time we didn't even have a vaccine. I remember there was a time we didn't know how high the death toll was going to go. And you know where rebellion gets you? At almost 800,000 did. In America. And some of them didn't have to die. They got bad information. I ain't worried about how people think about me. I don't care. Because see, I got to stand before him. And ain't nothing, if you ever had, anybody ever had a spanking? But let me tell you something. Ain't no spanking like a spanking God to give you. I'm talking about a shown up. I'm talking about when he stripped you down. And it has nothing to do with your closing. I'm talking about when he gets to the very inner core of your being and really show who you are. I'm talking about when he get done to you, ain't enough snot coming out of your nose. Because when he get done with you, you can't even lift your head up. Some of us, the problem is we've been in church too long and we ain't been consummated by the Holy Ghost. You've been going to church, but amen, ain't no life in you. We need some paddles to, 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 to shock you and to let you know, don't you understand that if it wasn't for the mercy of God, you wouldn't even be in your right mind? What done happened to the church, especially, and I'm not trying to make it color, the African-American church, amen, and most of us, can I just be real? Truth be told, most of us ain't come out done no way. I'm just going to get it true. Some of us come off farms. Some of us come off one, 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 uh, one stop sign, sign towns. You're trying to tell somebody uh, how to get to your city and don't miss the stoplight because if you go through the stoplight, that's it. And so God brings you to a level of influence and you forget where you came from. Some of us come out of the projects. And we get to a level of accomplishments and we won't even tell God, thank you. 
Let me, let me, let me go through my notes real quick because I want to hit this. Go, go back to Timothy. I got so much, but go back to Timothy. <clears throat> Paul was telling Timothy in essence, Timothy, you're going to go through some things. But I want you to hold your position, Timothy. And we're going to break some of this down real quick. <clears throat> go to Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, real quick. Because really this is a sermon of, of, of preparation for hire. This is not a sermon to beat you up. This is a sermon for you to go home and do it and, and, and conduct an assessment of yourself and say, Lord, am I doing everything I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be doing for the kingdom? Am I representing you as an ambassador of the kingdom of God? I've told you about your ambassadorship. An ambassador has been appointed by someone. Uh, the U.S. ambassador to, 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 to Japan. He's been appointed. He or she has been appointed. They've been confirmed. And, and, and then so they, 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 they have the resources. They go over to Japan and they are representing, guess who? The United States of America. They're not over there talking about what I want and, and, and we want this. No, America. This is America's position. Whereas God's ambassadors, guess who we represent? God. Can I drop a, a bombshell on you? Because the man of God jumped in on me this morning. He said, as ambassadors, we're not supposed to be agreeable with everybody. He said, as ambassadors of the kingdom of God, we don't, watch this, align ourselves with everything that's being done in the world. Why? Because we're different. He said people should recognize something different about you without you saying it. I don't have to carry a big old Bible to me. I'm saying they should carry him. They should watch me by my wall. There's something different about him. He won't just say, he won't. First of all, he's not going to allow you to bring anything to him. He doesn't get into the office jokes, the office parties, and things of that nature. He's separated. He lets you know from Jump Street, I'm drawing a line in the sand. Why? Because I'm an ambassador. I'm representing my father. I don't represent the world because I used to represent him because I used to belong to Satan. But I, I, I fired him a long time ago. And guess what? I'm not going to rehire him. Because I found him out to be a fake and a liar. He came back up what he says. And guess what? Since I got a new captain, who's my, my heavenly father, I found out now that I got authority over who I used to work for. So why am I going to go to somebody and try to appease them when I'm on a, on a spiritual level now? Watch this. Not based on anything I've done. It's based on the finished work of Christ. I'm on a different spiritual plane than he is. That's why the Bible said, resist the devil and he'll flee. Okay, real quick, let's go through this. <clears throat> First Timothy 4 and 10. He said, uh, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. That means that in the kingdom of God, you have to work. You have to labor. You have to sacrifice. And then you're going to suffer reproach. What is reproach? It's when people don't want to hang around you. It's when they can't stand you. Why is that? I'm glad you asked. Because we trust in the living God. Who is the savior of all men. Especially of those who believe. You see that? So Paul. This is a letter from, from Paul. Who is Timothy's spiritual father. And he's instructing him. Timothy. You got to labor. You got to stay in position. And oh by the way. They're not going to like you. Can I go deeper? Alright. Let's go down to verse 12. <clears throat> Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. I could just break this down for you. Basically, what he's telling Timothy is, in this case, he's talking about Timothy's youth. In your case, it may be something else. Don't let them despise your womanhood. Don't let them despise 
because you don't have a mega church or you're not on TV. See, all of us have different levels of assignment. Some people have been anointed to drive the church bus. And if they try to do something else, they would not be affected because the anointing comes with driving the church bus. And so when they go before God and they begin to tell God what they used to do, he said, but I anointed you to drive the church bus. That's where your reward is. And so if you get out of place and you leave the church bus, guess what? You missed out on your reward. Because you don't get a reward doing something else that you ain't supposed to be doing. Okay, let's go deeper. Uh, drop down to, uh, how I want to do this. Now, uh, uh, 12B. I want to I deal with 1 Timothy 4, 12B. Now, he, 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 he talks about his conduct. Okay. See, in, in, in 4A, in 412A, he talks about his, his youth and what he's going to be, have to come up against. But then he breaks it down. Don't you know that by your conduct, people are going to know whether or not you're saved? Now, watch this. He said, 4B, he said, set the example for other believers. You see that? Now, watch this. How do we do this? In word, in conversation. In charity, charity is another word for love. In faith, in purity. What do you mean by that? That means I live holy. Holiness starts with not necessarily how you conduct yourself, but it also starts with how you allow people to deal with you. See, ladies, you don't just allow especially the single sisters in the house, you just don't allow somebody with their pants down to the ankle to even approach you. They pretty much telling you how they think about you because they're telling you, you're going to have to accept me for I am, but you're like, no, buddy. I only deal with individuals whose pants come all the way up and they have a belt. Why? Because you're showing them your conduct and purity. I don't want to see your underwear. Because it really is just a spirit of rebellion. I got to deal with this, okay? So let's go deeper. Drop down to 1 Timothy 4 and 13. See, this is important. Because what, Tim, what, 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 what Apostle Paul is doing is he's giving his son instructions. And I'm amazed in this generation here, they don't want no instructions. They don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Just give me the money, give me the car, give me what I want, and leave me alone. They don't want no instructions. See, the day and age I came up, they ain't gave you nothing, and you was going to listen to them too. And your face better be straight when you're talking to them. Because if you display any attitude, judgment going to fall. I don't care how old you is. Because my mama used to tell me, I brought you in the world, and I'll take you out. But now they want, we give them everything, and they don't want to hear nothing we got to say. Oh, Dad, I... Oh, Dad, I, I, sometimes I had to tell my younger son, who you think you're talking to? Oh, Dad, my bad. Right. I ain't one of your boys you're hanging out with or one of your little stinking women you're running behind it out there. I'm going old school. That's the way they used to talk. See, in my day, when you brought one home and Mama didn't care, didn't like her, as soon as she was gone, you need to leave that right where you found her. Am I lying? All right. Don't know where you got her from. Take her back. Okay? First, Corinth, First Timothy 4 and 13. He said, now, till I come. That means that there's going to be a time that I'm going to be separated from you, Timothy. He said, but I'm going to give you some instruction till I come. Watch this. Give attendance to reading. Reading what? The scriptures. To exhortation. To building the people up. Into doctrine. Why those three? Because I can't inform you if there's nothing in me. You got people out here, they call themselves leaders, and they can't tell you nothing about the scriptures. They go on the internet and buy sermons. And then he said doctrine. Why doctrine? Why is doctrine so important? Because when you are in the right church, they should instruct you in such a way that no one can bamboozle you concerning the scriptures. That means that your leader has to have a depth of revelation and understanding, not of only the Bible, but other religions. 
Okay? Now watch this. Drop down to 1 Timothy 4 and 14. Next, Paul reminds Timothy of his gifting and the result of his ordination. See, he's taking him through the process. What he's doing is he's building him up and letting him know, even though you're going through things, remember these things here. All right? First Timothy 4 and 14. He said, neglect not the gift that's in me. What does that mean? That means that whatever God has inputted into you, imputed into you, don't neglect it. How many people, you in church, but you sitting on your gift? I ain't doing that for the church. I ain't doing that. It's my gift. I ain't volunteering to do nothing. But who saved you? Who healed you? Who gave you the job? Who gave you the promotion? Who gave you the car that you drive? I'm just saying. Which was given thee by prophecy. Some of you all have been prophesied to concerning your future. And some of you all is manifesting. Some of yours prophecy is on hold because of disobedience. Doesn't mean the prophecy is not true. Prophecies are conditional. Can I just park it right there real quick? Okay, you receive a prophecy. The prophecy is true, but you got to do your part. And your part is, first of all, you got to submit yourself to God. That's first and foremost. If you get a prophecy and you go back into the world, doesn't mean the prophecy is not true. You are the place. It will not come to pass in disobedience and rebellion. The, prop, that, that the individual who told you this is not a false prophet. You got out of place. So don't go there trying to sue the prophet or the prophetess because what they said about you didn't come to truth. No, it's you. And this is another generation that will not take ownership of their own mistakes. It's my mama. She didn't love me enough. My daddy wasn't there for me. Mine wasn't either. Okay? Doesn't mean that I ain't supposed to raise my kids right. With the land on hands of the presbytery. That means that Timothy, there's a gift on you. It was through prophecy, but we ordained you the right way. How in the world are you going to listen to somebody that ain't put no time in with you? I'm amazed. You all running all over the place. You listening to this prophet and that prophet, and they ain't imparted nothing to your life, but you're doing a whole lot of impartation with, and checks and, and gifts, and they ain't put no time. In your development. They just prophesy. That's called manipulation. In witchcraft. That's why your pastor get talked about. Because I know what I'm talking about. That's why some of you go to these conferences, I got a $500 line, I got a $100 line. Uh, the, the $5 line is at the end, and that's if I can get down there. I may have been all out of prophecy or prophecy by the time I get down there. Drop down to 1 Timothy 4 and 15. I'm hurrying. I'm, I'm going to get a ball for you. Meditate upon it. He said that after you've done all these things, Verse 15, meditate upon these things. Think about what I just instructed you, Timothy. Meditate. Don't just run away with them. Spend some time in prayer, in, 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 in meditation, and meditate on these things. Then he goes deeper. He said, give thyself 
holy to them. To what? To the things I told you to do. And this last part had me a little bit confused. That thy profiting may appear to all. Hmm. So Paul tells to be first of all, to meditate upon these things. See, Satan brings all types of accusations regarding God's call upon your life. God says, and then Satan come right back and he'll tell you otherwise. That's your sure sign that you've been called to do what you've been called to do. I'm telling you, it's a sure sign. If God tells you something and Satan comes right behind him and said, he didn't tell you that. Or when your friend said, that don't make sense. That should be a red flag. Okay, I've been called to do this. I got my evidence. That's, that's my confirmation right there. Watch this. The more, the more uh, pushback against what God has told me, the greater, the greater the confirmation. Okay, let's go deeper. So it's important to reflect or, or to meditate on what God has called you to do. You need to reflect on it. You need to meditate upon it. You need to get it inside you till you believe it. I don't care if a Mack truck run over you. You're locked into what God has called you to do. You've meditated on it. You've prayed on it. You've got your confirmations. You're locked in. Watch this. Paul instructs Timothy that he must be all in. You can't have one foot in the world, one foot in the church. You got to be all in. He said, come out from among them. Be you separate, said the Lord of hosts. I know what it is. But we've been friends forever. Yeah. And as long as you've been friends with them, they've been taken. They've been borrowing. Because y'all go way back. But that's what happens when you hang around people you're familiar with. They don't challenge you. They're like spiritual leeches. You want to go to college? Girl, ain't, got, girl, ain't nobody got time for that. Let's go to the club. Oh, it's time to study. Hey, the frat boy's having a party. Professor, understand? No, he ain't. Okay. Now watch this. He said that thy profiting may appear to all. Profiting. Now, if I'm a prophet, that means I'm going to get some money. This ain't talking about money. This ain't got nothing to do with money. He said, this has nothing to do with money. But, but, but the profiting comes from others witnessing the result of Paul's instructions to you, Timothy. In other words, if you follow my instructions, they're going to see the manifestation of everything I instructed you about. And so they're going to see it works. Now let me drop the dime on you. We done went from 10 all the way to 15. All of this must be done in order for verse 16 to come to pass. Verse 16. Take heed unto thyself. You see that? Take heed. See, we don't spend enough time examining ourselves and examining our motives. See, that's when that meditation comes. He said, now take heed unto thyself. Let's go deeper. And until thy doctrine. Then he says, continue in them. So take heed in thyself. In other words, make sure you live in what you're talking about. Make sure you walk in the wall. Then make sure that you're honoring what you're teaching. Continue to do so. Why? I'm glad you asked. As I close. For in doing this, thou shalt save both thyself and them that hear thee. Do you see that? That's what holding your position is all about. It ain't about us. It's about those unsaved loved ones. It's about those unsaved co-workers. It's about those unsaved uh, acquaintances. If they can see me walk the straight and narrow, 
if they can see that I'm true, if they can see that I'm all in, if they can see no shadow of turning, no compromise, no conformity to the world, they'll want to come and partake of the same relationship that I have with God. Can you receive this word? Give me some, some volume on this, please. Come on, let's thank God for the word one more time. Amen. The word was so powerful today. But for me to benefit from the word, I have to be born again. You know, Second Corinth, I mean, First Corinthians 2 tells us that the things of God are foolishness to the natural man. And we have to be able to receive this word today to benefit from us. To benefit from the word, we have to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. And if you hadn't received Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity right now to come forth. It's very simple, and we've went over this in Romans. All you have to do is just believe on that name, Jesus, and believe that God raised him on that third day from, from, from the death. And the Bible says that you will be saved. Will you come this morning? Amen, will you come? And if you're backslidden this morning and you've walked away from God, we want to give you an opportunity to come. We're here for you. The Bible says that Jesus said he's married to the backslide. We're here for you this morning. If you've walked away, this is your opportunity to come. And if you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you fellowship with, here, with us here at Touched by the Word Ministry. Come on, let's just give God another hand praise for the word. We're getting ready to take up our tithes and offerings. and We're going to ask that everyone that's able to stand. And as usual, we thank God for your gifts. God has been gracious. He's been good to us. And if you have two opportunities, we have the opportunity to give online, or we have four baskets in the back that you can just fill out your check and put it in the basket on the way out. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we honor you this morning, Lord. We thank you for the word, Lord. Such a powerful word, Lord God. And we ask, dear God, that you help us, Lord, not just to be hearers of your word, Lord God, but doers, Lord. Father, help us to get that word down on the inside of us so that we'll change and we won't leave here the same way we came, Lord. And now, Lord, as we give our tithes and our offerings, Lord God, as you've com commanded us to do, Lord, we come with the expectation, Lord, that if we obey your word, Lord God, that you will open up that window of heaven, Lord God, and pour us out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We do honor the Lord today, and we want to thank him one more time for the word. Let's just thank the Lord for our pastor this morning. Amen. Amen. We, we thank God for such a powerful word. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and get ready and dismiss. And uh, we're going to ask every, 